Today it's time for a bit of maintenance here on my Lithium Ion 18650 uh, 7S 20P sort of 24 volt pack here, which is solar charged through this Tracer A solar charge controller. And uh, this has two 100 watt monocrystalline panels connected to it, which are in series. And it's actually been a good nine months since I did a discharge test here on this pack using this EP Ever STI 500 inverter uh, where I tried to get one kilowatt hour of energy out of this pack and that failed. Uh, well, it's debatable whether it failed, but I'm going to say it did fail. Um, and that was mainly because I turned off the inverter because cell five here was sagging very low, much lower than its neighbouring packs. And uh, yeah, I've never actually looked into that. Um, I've just let it charge back up and uh, continue charging and discharging for the last nine months. And to be fair, most of the time it works all right. It works okay. Yeah, as I say, most of the time it's not a major problem. But let's have a quick look at yesterday's charging graph here uh, the cells got down to under four volts yesterday morning uh, at about 5 a.m they were at their lowest but uh, there's four volts and this is uh, 3.95 volts so these are still quite close together really but red is quite clearly at the bottom there with yellow at the top and uh, after well what is a couple of hours charging uh, my cells peaked at 4.1 volts here and uh, you can see that the red is the highest so that pack is not only getting to be the lowest when uh, they're being discharged it's also becoming the highest when they're being charged and uh, I've seen this repeatedly on a number of days and of course red here on this graph well that's cell 5 so I do need to look into cell 5 to be fair the DIY BMS brings this into check pretty quickly and uh, sorts out that top balance there but uh, yeah there's definitely cell 5 is let's say a weaker pack so with that in mind let's pull out cell 5 here so I need to turn off the solar to the charge controller now I'll turn off the charge controller entirely. That also powers off the DIY BMS. And uh, yeah, I'll take cell 5 out now. So... And that is cell 5 out. Okay, so here is the cell, and we'll check the uh, positive side first. Now, for this, I'm just going through all my fuses and checking that they're connected at both ends, both on the cell positive and my copper bus bar. And so far, so good. They are all... Oh no, that one is not connected. So with this pack is a cell down and that one's also not connected and these seem to have broken off rather than fused. So yeah, I'm I'm happy that they're okay. So now I can continue with the others. Everything else is okay. And that one is also broken. So actually, on this pack, I've got three cells here which aren't connected to the rest of the pack. So this, with each of these being about 2.5 amp hours, well, that means I've lost 7.5 amp hours out of this pack. No wonder it is underperforming. So do I fix those or do I check on the bottom first? Let's check the bottom first so if i turn this over and lean it there i'm leaning it on something so that i'm not placing it down on those delicate fuses and i'll check all the fuses 
connecting the negative side. There we go. These all look... No, there's a broken one. So, and that's a different one, I think, to the one on top. So, this pack, no wonder it's struggling with what looks like four cells disconnected. No, that was all right. Yeah, so I've got one on the back and two, uh, sorry, three, haven't I, on the front. So I think I've got four. I can place it down this side. So it's this one, that one there. Yeah, so it is, it's a different cell. So I've definitely, definitely got four cells which aren't connected to this pack. No wonder it's performing badly. Right, I've dug out the multimeter now because I need to check the overall pack voltage first and then compare it to these three cells, that one up there, this one and that one, which have the broken fuses. Because, of course, if there's a wildly different voltage uh, between the pack voltage and any of those individual cells, well, potentially there's a lot of current that could flow. And hopefully the worst that will happen is I blow the fuse I'm just trying to fix. But, uh, well, yeah, that should be all that happens. But let's find the overall pack voltage let's just connect there and there so the overall pack is 4.02 volts not bad right this top left cell is also 4.02 now that fuse is definitely not connected but before i touched it earlier perhaps it was just touching and that's uh, managed to keep it at the same voltage so that one should be able to be reconnected very easily they've then got this one down here 4.15 volts so that's a little bit higher 0.13 volts higher well it's not crazy is it it's not a massive difference that's probably okay as well and this bottom right one 3.95 volts so that's obviously disconnected at a lower voltage um but that's less than 0.1 of a volt below the rest of the pack so that's the most worrying one i guess because the whole of the pack will start feeding current into this cell to charge it up but because it's only 0.1 of a volt different i think we'll be all right now, not forgetting, there's also this cell here, which has a broken connection. So let's connect to the positive down there and the negative up here, 4.15. So again, that one's a little bit higher, but not by much. I think we'll be all right here. I think I can resolder these fuses. So this is that cell that is lower than the rest of the pack, about 0 0.13 volts lower so here's my fuse is this fuse going to instantly vaporize as soon as i connect these together well i guess we'll see these fuses are five amps so no that fuse is perfectly fine so uh at least we know it's less than five amps that's flowing into this cell now as it's brought up to the same voltage as the rest of this pack so uh, i'm happy with that little test and i can solder these fuses back in place talking about soldering that was a bit of a rubbish job up there wasn't it so we'll see if i can just reattach the existing fuses bit of flux on there tends to make this job a fair bit easier i've also put my large tip on the soldering iron so we'll just flow that in there and that one looks okay now the other ones are broken at the bus bar end so i suspect these are going to be a fair bit more difficult let's just tin that iron because of course the uh, bus bar is going to take quite a bit of heat away from my iron. So let's see what we can do here. Oh, that's flowing all right. 
but not holding. Let's uh, add a bit more flux. Add a bit more solder. And then while that's being held down, get the tweezers under there. That's got it, I think. Yeah, that one's good. Just this top left one to do now. Same process. Bit of flux to help the job. Get my iron in. Heat up that bus bar. And then we'll try... and flow to the same bit of fuse wire no that one hasn't worked i think this bit of fuse wire is a bit short might have to get some new fuse wire so the fuses on my soles are from these cards which is domestic fuse wire and it's the five amp fuse wire here at the top and this is both dirt cheap and plentiful because Everybody's houses used to use these uh, uh, fuse wires, but not so much anymore. But there's still plenty of people selling this stuff. So I'll get a strip of fuse wire there and uh, we'll be able to solder this in, hopefully. Let's first of all solder one end onto my bus bar. That seems to be reasonably well connected. Forgot to get rid of the old bit. There we go. Get rid of that. A uh, bit more flux now on the top of the cell. And some fresh solder. And that seems to be okay remove the excess uh fuse wire yeah so that's one two three reconnected so there's just one more to do on the bottom now the uh, negative side here of this cell will be a bit more difficult to solder and that's because well if you look at an 18650 uh, the negative side is, well, attached to the whole can, which takes up the majority of the cell. Uh, this whole bit here is the negative, and then the top here is the only positive bit. So the positive side is very easy to solder because there's not a lot of metal there. There's not a lot to sink the heat away from your solder iron, uh, soldering iron. Uh, but the negative, well, there's an awful lot more, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, it takes a bit of heating up. And, uh, of course, heating up a cell isn't a great idea. So um, I tend to keep my iron quite hot. 380 degrees it is set to to do this job. I will keep it quite hot and then hopefully... Uh, won't have to hold it on the uh, cell for very long. I think that will probably resolder there. I think I don't need any new wire. Let's put a bit of flux on and uh, see what we can do. So uh, there's the iron. Let's get a bit of solder on the tip just to help get the heat into that and there we have it is that done that was less difficult than it could have been yeah that's soldered i'm quite happy that that's a reasonable connection so i'm interested to find out that by uh reconnecting those now four cells four cells i can't believe this pack was four cells short uh, if we reconnect them what that does to the overall pack voltage well yeah that's definitely increased hasn't it 4.029 now and previously it was sort of 4.019 or 4.020 so yeah it's definitely increased a little bit so hopefully the capacity of this pack has also increased right so let's refit it let's just move that 
temperature probe out of the way. They should just lift up, make sure that we're happy. Yeah, that all looks good. And uh, let's uh, screw these back together again. Now with the pack reconnected, both it's negative and it's positive, and yes, they're the right way around. Um, let's reattach the DIY BMS module. There we go, that one's booting up. All the others are in panic mode because the controller over here at the end is switched off because the charge controller is switched off and that provides the power to the Wemos D1 Mini clone at the end there that's uh, controlling this DIY BMS. So that all looks good. Positive to negative, positive to negative. That's all connected in. Let's turn on the charge controller. Now, that should give some power to the DIY BMS, so that stops all the modules from panicking. So the DIY BMS is back up and running, and uh, the uh, charge controller is also happy. Uh, so we can turn back on the solar, and uh, yeah, that says the solar coming in. It is late in the evening now, there won't be very much at all. And uh, yeah, all of those modules seem happy. Uh, that seems like a good job. Well done. So the DIY BMS controller has been running for a few minutes now and we can see it's reporting all the voltages of all those packs and cell 5 is just, by a slimmest of margins, the highest. So over the next uh, couple of days as that charges and the DIY BMS starts balancing these cells, Hopefully that will be brought back to the cell average here of just over 4 volts. And uh, hopefully now that it's acting as a 20p pack rather than a 16p pack, I won't see that same level of sag or that same level of overcharge that we saw in the graph earlier in this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.